Well, I must admit, I always had to have the Dickens Theatre, which I mean, was, and so we last minute checking me down and saw me coming down. Hello, welcome to the July meeting of the Company Governance Committee. I think it is a little while since we've successfully met in person, because uh, many meetings got moved online thanks to COVID, but it's lovely to be in a room. Uh, welcome to Yvonne, you are a new member. Thank you. Um, we're taking on the kind of portfolio of finance and resources. resources. There we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so no, welcome to Good Company Governance. Mm -hmm. And you are here, you're not Gareth Moore. No, I'm standing in for Gareth Moore. I'm his substitute. Story of my life. Welcome to <laughs> you, I know the feeling. <laughs> I know the feeling. Right, uh, notice recording webcast that so this meeting will be um, recorded for live but uh, subsequent broadcast by the Council's meeting at YouTube site. Uh, and members of the press and public may record take photos, except when there is, is confidential or exempt information or items. Membership of the committee is for noting under item two. Uh, so we have, um, as I said, uh, myself and Yvonne, uh, myself and Council Mosquito from the Labour Group, we have Gareth Moore from the Conservative Group, but that's going to be substituting, and we have uh, Council Hunt in his own right, and the Liberal Democrat Group. Those are our members for the year. Uh, for the year. Right, terms of reference are up next. So, terms of reference have been circulated since it's the first meeting of the new municipal cycle. I thought it was good to go back and remind ourselves why we are here and, uh, and what our purpose is. Um, they are noting, but I wanted to pause to see if anybody had any points they wanted to raise on it, any queries about, about the, um, the terms of reference, um, and equally officers, if there's anything you wanted to emphasise about those going forward. No? Everyone is content. Okay, so those terms of reference are for noting. Are those noted? Yes, sorry. Okay, item three is apologies. Uh, our only apology is for Gareth Moore, uh, which has been uh, taken put in advance. You as a substitute, declarations of interest. Members are reminded they must have heard all relevant pecuniary and non-pecuniary interests arising from any business to be discussed at the meeting. Um, I have just been appointed to the airport board, is something that I need to flag because that won't be on my register of interests yet because I happened yesterday. It will be added to the official account. So I'm now a member of the Birmingham Airport Board. It is my extra declaration of interest over and above what is already declared. Any deals for anything? No. Let me start on all of these appointments, um, Deputy Leader. But like I said, I was preoccupied elsewhere, so nothing else. I'm sure you won't get it done. If I realised it was half, I was just completely oblivious to all of it because I've been occupied with other things. But no, that's fine. Check your inbox and see what the leader signed you up for. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, definition of interest as myself on the airport board, mm. and I think that is that for now. Public notes in the last meeting have been circulated. Anybody got anything on those public notes? Any changes? Are any matters arising? Oh, already covered in the minutes. I don't have any. I'm not seeing anybody. Are they noted then? The public notes of the last meeting? Noted. Thank you. And that takes us on to the meat of the meeting. So, first substantial item is company update, uh, just an information update, and that's Alison over to you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, so, this is an update on movements of the company's that have gone to the company's house since our last meeting. Then, on the private agenda, we report any private confidential updates, and you'll find that uh, later on today. So this report um, covers the company changes that have been reported, and I'll just, I'll just run through those quickly. Um, members may uh, recall that last year there was a programme of work to do with City uh, Birmingham Crop Care Limited. As a result of that, um, Kathleen James, as Director of Property Services, was called back into the Council. So she resigned as Director so that she could advise the Council with her expertise, and um, I was appointed in her place. So that, that's the first change. And we also have Simon Dillon and Forest on that uh, company as well. 
Um, a CIVICO, uh, we had a couple of terminations of appointments that allowed us to go into elections. Uh, so, um, in Richard Briggs, he, he resigned before the elections, and then we had um, Peter Griffiths resigned, and there was uh, there will be appointments coming forward um, later in the year. Then in Airport Holdings, as you know, uh, Councillor Chatfield resigned, and at our next meeting, I expect we will see the right name on here as the appointment. Uh, BBC, then the Venture Capital. Um, we, that's the company that is part of the group from which the um, Digital Man Service um, runs its private sector trading. That has moved away from my area, the, the directorate, um, and so consequently I resigned from that board and there were two new appointees there from the service. And then finally, uh, Stockfield Community Association, uh, that has been the uh, resignation of um, Councillor O'Shea. Then moving on to accounts that have been filed since last we met, you'll see those listed there. So I've been through the accounts reports and the audit reports where appropriate, and um, all audits have been clear, uh, and uh, there, there's been nothing that I've needed to pull out of those. Um, company performance will be given on the private agenda when more of the more detailed information is provided by my group of companies. Okay, thank you. Okay, I just say that Councillor Mosquito is being incredibly humble because she is on the South Side bid and she's on the Pensions uh, Committee, so she is she's very busy on these things. <laughs> humble, so. Yes, thank you very much, Councillor <laughs> Excellent. Right, has anyone got anything on the uh, company update paper? I don't know if it's relevant to this meeting, but as the stock food range for the cabinet, uh, the Egg Health Screen Councillors and Nominated Councillor Penny Wegg fill yeah. that post. Okay, we'll probably see that all come through then again. Yeah. 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 I expect there to be a whole raft of items, especially as we'll get a lot of accounts being filed um, this month. Uh, so at the end of June, there's, there's quite a lot of accounts filed. And we'll see next the next one, it's got quite a list. Okay. Anything else on this for the new See anyone? Okay, and then we have this under the um, version that's on the private bill of today. We don't need to do any. No, we do. Well, so we'll turn to the private appendix on this other private report, and uh, we'll get a whole round of new updates after I think the next cabinet meeting. Get made. Okay. Right. In that case, is that noted? Noted. Fantastic. Let's move on to training update then, item 8. Colin Price, over to you. Hello. Um, I hope you can hear me properly. It's a little bit intermittent at, at my end. Thank you. Thank you. Um, since the last committee meeting, a number of officers and members have received small group or one-to-one -one training in the roles and responsibilities of directors. Um, this training was somewhat thematic in concentrating on directors of the cultural sector companies and organisations. Um, they have certain idiosyncratic needs that are peculiar to that sector. Um, the training covered the director's statutory roles and responsibilities, as well as guidance in the areas of conflicts of interest and wrongful and fraudulent trading, etc., and a lot more besides. But following the, the nomination of um, new directors subsequent to the May elections, um, which took place a couple of weeks ago, the nominations, um, further directors' roles and responsibilities training will be held. Um, we're scheduling that. It's it's quite a feat getting that together. So it'll be around about the end of September or October this year. And that will provide the new and returning directors with the legal compliance expectations of them. Um, and that session likely will be provided by the civil service training arm. <laughs> But alongside that, we identified some time ago the need for some board effectiveness training, which is sits outside of just directors knowing their roles and responsibilities from a statutory perspective. Um, they actually need to know what an effective award looks like. Um, and particularly for all directors, really, but particularly for those serving on the boards of our fully trading or wholly owned arms length companies, the likes of a Civico and wholesale markets and, and a number of others. 
And this training then will take place within the same session as the roles and responsibilities training. So the directors then only need to attend once. And directors who miss that training will receive um, mop up sessions again, one to one or um, in a small group session so that throughout the year we'll ensure that everyone has been caught. And for this second session, the board effectiveness training, we've identified um, an, a truly excellent private sector commercial director and lecturer. He also lectures for the British Venture Capital and Private Equity Association and a number of other well-established institu institutions. Um, he's very, very good. And his training will cover then a number of different subject areas. And um, I reported on this at the previous meeting, but I'm aware that, of course, we have new members today. So I'll go through the elements of what that training will, uh, will contain. So he will be lecturing and training on board performance and why it matters. He'll be helping directors to identify when a board is not actually a board. You know, how do you measure it? You highlight the importance of knowing when um, the board that a director is sitting on is not effectively or even legally a company board. He'll help people to understand what the purpose of a board is, you know, what are they actually there to do, how um, the psychology of a board differs relevant to such things as equity holdings and voting and power and seniority, um, some of those softer issues which um, do affect the way a board operates, but aren't readily apparent. He'll deal with conflicts, conflicts of interest in um, a slightly different way from the statutory responsibilities of the um, board directors, which will be covered in the earlier session. Um, he'll be highlighting the features of performing boards and what, what do the good ones do well and how we can improve our own boards. And he'll be highlighting practical actions that um, directors can take to improve both their personal performance and the effectiveness of the board as, as a whole. So he'll cover quite quite a lot, I think, um, but all of which are essential, really, if we're going to have well-performing boards and directors who are absolutely up to speed with what's expected of them. It's a two-way street. It works um, far better directors will be um, better able to perform their duties and do so in perhaps um, a more assured way and knowing that they're well protected by being fore forewarned as it were um, so there's no substitute for good training. Um, in addition we will throughout the year be, be majoring on um, things like specific health and safety training for board directors um, GDPR training and environmental protection training. Directors perhaps will receive this kind of training through their own boards, but um, here as a matter of proper governance, we'd be wanting to ensure that all our directors are offered that training and that they do receive it. Um, and that's um, pretty much it for me, unless there are any questions. Are there any questions? Yeah. Um... How much training do the companies themselves uh, carry out? I can say because I went to an away day for one of the companies that I'm on, and they actually had a barrister in the morning talking to everyone, explaining governance. And then there was a, a charity solicitor came in the afternoon explaining the legal implications of green and eco things and things the board had to take into account. And I found that actually really helpful and made worthwhile. And I was wondering if, if other companies, because this is a wholly owned council company, so I was just wondering if there was other companies themselves themselves were taking out um, uh, sort of doing guidance for directors um, of their own bat and not just relying on the council essentially to organise it for them. Uh, yes, councillor, I suspect that most of the companies will provide some sort of training for their directors um, and, and some will do it better than others. That there are um, that the larger companies are very very accomplished to doing this, and I suppose from from our perspective, we provide our own training regardless of what companies may or may not do, so that there is some consistency of training and we can be assured of um, a minimum standard of training across the piece. 
So I suspect a lot of companies do provide some form of training and some level of training for their, their directors. Just to add to that, where you've got specialist areas in particular, I'm thinking of some retention trusts, uh, there's a whole lot of training that you have to undertake that's mandatory, uh, and then ongoing training that is provided. So I think it's funny, it kind of depends on the company, but good practice would say that yes, exactly what you experience should be added. Well, I'm noting this is a new innovation that we brought in about three years ago. And because uh, prior to that, we didn't have any systematic training for councillors mm -hmm. going onto these boards, which was identified as quite a governance issue, given just the sheer scale and size of some of the things we're taking on. Also, the personal jeopardy, councillors themselves in when they become board directors, they don't understand their roles. Uh, one long serving councillor, who will remain nameless, but was elected in 1980, told me that uh, he wished he had this 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Where else go from him? No, so it's a taking away can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. You'll be good to get an update then at the next meeting because we will have a run of new councillors uh, pointed towards. So I think what would be good is if we can get a rolling update of how many of our councillors have done the requisite training, who hasn't, and just making sure that we are offering to everybody uh, that training and through the groups, if we can promote that to our members. It's for their benefit as much as anybody else's. It's serious legal stuff. And we need to get them through this. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. We do, of course, all, also keep a, a very comprehensive um, database of um, all of our directors. And, um, and running alongside that is a record of who has been trained and when, and when refresher training is due. So um, we keep across that throughout the whole year. Excellent. Okay, in the absence of any other questions or comments, we just need to look at that report. So is that noted? Thank you. Okay, item nine, annual appointments 2223. Alison, back to you. Thank you. Uh, so this reproduces the report really for that to cabinet. I think sort of that timing's a bit strange because we would have had this um, perhaps before it went to cabinet. Uh, nevertheless, it's produced here for the good governance, come to note. Uh, and I think the thing that I do highlight to you, please, is that it is a snapshot of the position at the point it went and was approved. Um, things do change during the year, as you've heard on the update uh, report, and um, we're already of a board restructure that is occurring on the company. So I have been about that council meeting. So, it, it's not. It's a snapshot. It's a snapshot that comes here, but it, but it moves and then changes. Then comes to the Okay. It's just been noted. Does anyone have anything on this? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's important we know who is where mm -hmm. or any issues that arise. Okay. Well, so one thing I've got. To, I mean, if Gareth was here, he would know this definitively. Um, in cabinet. Um, I, there was some gaps from our group where we had, we had, Gareth certainly said that, you know, there was a few gaps from a few people on some things. I take it that's because he then said after cabinet, he would send an, um, an update to make sure they were done. I, I, I was trying to flick through here just to see if there was any gaps. I take it that that was from what I'm looking at here. Um, yeah, I saw an early version with quite a few gaps in it as well. So yeah. quite possibly, but I will check with the author of Thanks. Okay, that's just some noting. So, was that noted? Okay, and that takes us on to um, so we've got Birmingham Children's Trust in. So, um, what we do with our companies is on a regular basis, we invite in uh, usually some of our bigger companies um, to present to us their business plan for the year um, and to familiarise the committee with them, but also the committee and also to try and challenge John. Did you hear your name? That's a no. Literally just got on to you. Hi. Come on in. I was just explaining. Um, Birmingham Children's Trust are our next item. Um, we've got the information provided, but we'll have a discussion in private session, if that's okay. Uh, so what we've got on the public agenda is just for noting. That's noted. Yes, noted. Okay. Dates and activity, 22 to 23, are listed. 
Yeah, those have been voting. And any other urgent business on the public report? Uh, so agenda is no. Okay, in that case, I, in the nature of the, in view of the nature of the business to be transacted, which includes exempt information, can't read indication of public, now be excluded from the meeting.